Hey, what's going on, world? It's your boy Boom here, back at the man for This Is 50, man. And we got a very special guest who needs no introduction. You know, she's the queen of the South. We got Mulatto here with us today. How's it going, Mulatto? What up? <laughs> what's going on? Hey. How, how you feeling today? How you feeling? Good. Busy day. Um, got interviews and uh, studio tonight. Trying to finish up the deluxe, the queen of the South. So. Oh. That's, yeah. what, that's what's up what's up so like you said, you mentioned before that you uh you recorded queen of the south pretty much during the whole pandemic man um mm -hmm. even though it wasn't the rollout that you wanted how how did this pandemic help you reevaluate yourself and adjust for future projects yeah i would say like it gave me time to like really focus on my creative process like i had a couple of the songs on queen of the south i like surprised myself because usually like i got shows to do video shoots photo shoots like i'm so sidetracked with everything else so i just make time for the studio and like force myself to go in there versus like the pandemic and quarantine situation i had time to like actually go in the studio and, and spend the day in the studio like damn near sleep in the studio you know what i'm saying so like, I, I've been trying different creative processes, like freestyling, writing, cooking up with the producer, like trying just all type of different stuff. And I feel like it, it definitely was a blessing in disguise because the the album turned out really good. So it's like, yeah. Man, man, that's definitely facts. But now, um, being that you recorded this way and the album came out so great, would yeah. you consider doing this when the world open, opens back up? Uh, uh -huh. as far as your next pro or recording process? Mm -hmm. Hell yeah. Like, I'm a, now I'm going, like, when, I, when I'm working on a specific project, I'm going to block everything else out. Like, no shows this month, no da 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 I'm strictly focused on my project. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because it just, it, it helped me focus. Like, literally, I'm just making my music. I would go in the studio, cut it, and then I would just listen to it over and over. Like, when I was at home, driving to the grocery store or whatever just chilling just listening and listening and just critiquing myself so i had time to just focus so i'm gonna definitely do that now no doubt no doubt now one thing i know a lot of people don't ask you about in these interviews is look mm -hmm. hit the lotto cover uh -huh. <laughs> <All right. laughs> now, when you was making queen of the south cover ideas did you uh -huh. think about having to go above and beyond that cover or uh -huh. did you just simply just be like, look, I want more elegant, more of a distinguished queen of the South? Uh-huh. I wanted to do, like, it was just more elegant. I wanted to do, like, a trapped out, but still queen, like, you know what I'm saying? But, yeah, every cover, I always got to top the, the previous cover, for sure. Yeah, no doubt. Now, another thing that a lot of people don't ask you, what did your mama think of the Hit the Lotto cover? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I, one thing about it though, I got real supportive parents. Like they, they real free spirited. Like they, even as a kid, like we was always me and my sister. We was just raised to like express ourselves. So like, they know us. They heart. My mama know me at heart. So it's like when she see me naked on a hit the lotto cover, or she hear me rapping about some grown people stuff. Like they don't judge me because they know. Like they know they daughter. And they, they was just like even as a kid. Like I was allowed to dye my hair at a young age, or like. Yeah. wear nails and do my makeup and like my parents was like real just self-expression they was big on it so for sure for sure now another thing that um i know you probably get tired of look you put a lot into your music and you put a lot especially on the song no hooks where you pretty much mm -hmm. answer every question that has ever been asked of you from your okay. name to who you talking to yeah like, what your parents situation all that yeah. You ever get tired of people asking you questions about like stuff that you put into the music and then you'd be like well, yes to the music at all so <laughs> yes oh my gosh like people always ask me um am i gonna change my name how do i feel about the rap game and like stuff like that and it's just like okay you clearly ain't listening <laughs> you ain't told me for real no doubt. And then speaking of the rap game, if you came a long way from the rap game. You've released several projects. I know we all know that Queen of the South is your first major label debut, but yeah. it's not your first project. Obviously, you have tons of projects going all the way back from like 2016. 
but Literally. I want to know how do, or something that you can even help other artists with in the future that land like big time opportunities and then they're pretty much stuck in that limbo but how did you manage to just move beyond or make sure that became like a ghost history to you yeah you can make sure to like stick to the music and just keep creating great content to mm -hmm. allow you to just get out of that shadow yeah i think people just when they get those big platforms like um the rap game or even signing like when i signed to rca when you get those big when you accomplish those big like moments in your career people just get comfortable i never got comfortable that was the difference for me like when i did the show i'm like all right cool but i ain't gonna kick my feet up now i'm gonna still take off running because the show don't mean nothing if you don't back it up with the with the, the plan following the show you know what i'm saying so it's it's no different than uh, loving hip-hop or whatever these shows where you see these artists on there and people be clowning them and they be like um well, i ain't never heard this music and da -da -da, you only recording on show like you know what i'm saying you be in the studio all the time on the show where the music at like i, I refuse to be one of those so i was like i'm gonna just use this as like a platform rather than like oh i made it my mom made it I, I used it as a platform and i just kept recording kept doing shows like nothing changed i was still grinding like i never did the rap game even saying like when i signed the rca i still took off run i'm like I, I never stopped recording never stopped shooting videos like that work ethic can't change when you feel like you're doing you're doing something like monumental for your career or like a just accomplishing like a big goal of, of your career you can just never let up off the gas i think that's i, I feel like that's that that's it like it ain't really no super complicated thing i just never let up for sure for sure now no hook you said i wish i never did the show and that mm -hmm. would kind of deter people thinking that you'd be like oh well why would she say that when that's what put her on the map and then yeah like, it was like no my skills put me on the map so no period like i had to go back and forth with some trolls on the internet about that but <laughs> it it was really a uh, like a hyperbole i wasn't literally meaning oh yeah i wish i never did it it was just to like put emphasis on the fact that people won't let me grow up five years later from a situation at 16 years old now i'm grown i'm 21 you know what i'm saying i take care of a lot of people got my own everything and so it's like in my head it's it's hard for me to put myself in other people's shoes that only see me five years ago on a show and won't get that image out of their mind it's like it'd it be frustrating so i was like using it as a hyperbole to just express that frustration for sure for sure now another thing that a lot of people don't really or get misconceptions about you is the queen of the uh -huh. South title now you knew yeah. taking on that name you knew all the the work ethic and everything that came with it like even with the guy sure. back in the day claiming king of the south he knew what came yeah. so like um what was it how did you know that you wanted to run with the queen of the south moniker mm -hmm. and then how did or how do you feel there's really been no competition that has came at you since you said that thanks to incredible skill set so how do you feel about people sitting there like uh taking or not taking your moniker seriously but saying that you know hey um she says she's the queen of the south but she ain't got no room mm -hmm. to never prove it like but how do you feel yeah about i feel like it's just me kind of just manifesting it's like i knew that it was a heavy statement when i decided to name my project that or like make that an alter ego of myself but it's just like I know I'm not a here today, gone tomorrow artist. I know I got longevity in this. I've been had longevity in this. I've been rapping since 10 years old. Did the rap game at 16. Now 21, I'm signed my first deal, first top 100 billboard entry, first solo female rapper from Atlanta to go gold. Like it's, I'm not doing nothing but going up. So I don't see myself as nothing but the queen of the South in the future. So I'm gonna go ahead and claim it now. You know what I'm saying? Then on top of that, I grew up on tip. So it's like, it's just like paying my homage as a female rapper from Atlanta. It's just like T.I. claimed King of the South in his early 20s too, so shit. Now we've seen, we've seen T.I. mention you plenty of times that he's really honored mm -hmm. you as an artist, but have you, get, have you gotten any advice from him as far as, you know, even with the Queen of the South moniker? I know, I wish I, I, wish I could have, like, um, but now I haven't. But if I ever, like, bumped into him, I would, I would definitely let him know that he was, like, a big inspiration behind the, the title 
for sure. Like I grew up on Tip. Like Tip, one of my favorite rappers for sure. No doubt, no doubt. Now let's go back in the Queen of the South. How did you? How do you feel having not only released a great project, but having to release arguably one of the best albums of 2020? Like no it's really like you, no busy. And like so many other people. Like, yeah. So how does it feel just having people just put you in that category, just being mm -hmm. like, man, she she released one of the best albums in 2020. What? That that shit, it just feel well deserved. Like when you've been rapping as long as me, it's like, yes, about time. Like finally, you know what I'm saying? It's like all these years I've been rapping prepared me for this moment now. Like it feel well deserved and I, I think people just resonate with me because they just they respect my come up you know what i'm saying so it's like on top of having a good project and you know good product for the people to listen to it's like they respect my come up so no doubt, no doubt. now the um how much growth would we say you have came from hit the lotto to now so much and it's crazy because it's not even um it wasn't even a year in between it was maybe like eight months, eight months in between um, those two projects. But being so young, I think, okay, so I dropped that at 20 or like as soon as I turned 21 and now I'm going on 22. So it's just being so young, I grow every day as a human, as a woman, as a young woman. So it just reflects in my music like real quick. Like next month, I'll be on a whole nother sound, a whole nother just flow like everything so being so young it's like I constantly evolve so like in eight months I can switch whole flip the whole script like on hit the lotto I ain't even really have no actually not even really I didn't have no um like melodic type of songs then boom queen of the south I got like three on it so it's like I'm constantly evolving as a person and just reflecting the music now let's talk about that like um now you definitely have the bars and then like you said on this project you did a little you did the little singing thing like what made you more yeah. comfortable to sing now on this project mm -hmm. than your previous work um i just didn't want to come out the gate um singing like i wanted to solidify where where my lane was before i got too in depth like with the versatility like i didn't want to cross over as they say too early because it's just like i'm i love rapping i'm, I'm a bar a bar type of person period off rip first and then we can go into the mainstream industry shit but off rip don't forget baby no hook bar for bar uh look back at it bar for bar uh he say she say bar for bar them that's my lane you know what i'm saying so i ain't never want to introduce myself to a whole bunch of new fans off rip where they would they would think i was a rap a uh, singer because i'm always be a rapper first for sure for sure now like you said you have so many uh so many great songs on the project but one of my favorite songs on the project is blame me now i want to know how oh! difficult was it for you to make You're that real. how difficult You're was real. it for you to make that song it was so easy literally it was just me speaking from like a vulnerable point in in life and like it was it was just facts like um i had i was in a, a long relationship and that was just me speaking from from the effects of that relationship and i just feel like so many people was gonna be able to relate to me so you a real one for that though because <laughs> when people tell me blame me they favorite i get so happy because i'm like first of all you thoroughly listen to the project second of all you a real one because you you're not for the the singles and you know the shit for the industry that's that's real content no doubt, no doubt. I mean, it was cool because you were actually vulnerable and you actually spoke from a female side. It's not yeah. something that we get every time. It's always the man exactly. that be like, you did this to me. And exactly. Cool hearing that, be like the other side. So it's exactly. Dope. Now, another thing as far as having arguably one of the best albums of 2020 is you got to be on the freshman list. Now, I know Woo! it got watered down from generations now from a different eras and whatnot, but it's still important mm -hmm. to hip hop and it's still For important sure. to people like you. Like, did you ever want to make that list as a kid? And then what was it like when you first got the news that you was going to make the list? Mm -hmm. Man, every year, like I would be tuned in watching the ciphers, the freestyle, just all the YouTube content that they roll, um, roll out the magazine cover, like literally reading everybody bio and stuff. I would be so tuned in every year as a kid and 
when I got that call, it was the beginning of quarantine and I had to keep it a secret because they, they was like, yeah, you got it, but we don't know like what the, what the plan is going to be with um, quarantine and, you know, the restrictions, COVID restrictions. Like, it's like, okay, we can't film nothing right now. So boom, we can't link up and do the photo shoot cover right now. So boom. So I had to keep that a secret for so long, but that was so frustrating. But it was, it was like, it, it was so dope. Like that's something I've been wanting to do forever. So, I mean, and then you weren't the only girl that made the list this time. And so, can we see a collaboration with you and Chica? I think Chica's so fucking dope. Like um, when she posted the flyer, I had come in and congratulated her. Like she dope as fuck. So hell yeah, I'll be open to um, working with Chica for sure. Yeah, we had it down because it was so many females that that could have been a part of it because the like female rap wave is crazy right now. So it was so many females that could have been on the cover. So we 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 held it down this year for sure. No doubt, no doubt. And then it's like, um, what was it like? Uh, you know, you had. I mean, obviously, you had to come in a whole lot different than the fellas did because you know they can yeah. just do whatever. But you you really had to make a statement. You know, you had to really have that dominance behind you. And be able yeah. to compete with the guys at the same time. What was it like going in yeah. and doing those ciphers? Man, it was a little intimidating because, like you said, it's just be so much pressure on the females. It's like they they critique us way harder than the than the niggas. So it's like it was a little intimidating for that reason. Then on top of that, it's just something that I've been wanting to do for so long. So I was just hella nervous. Then it it was an all day shoot, so it's just like dragged out like by the end of the day you lagging but you ain't even shot the cypher yet so you gotta make sure your energy still up you know what i'm saying just stuff that the people don't see that go on behind the scenes it's like it was it was definitely nerve-wracking no doubt no doubt now who other than chica who else would you like to collaborate with that was in the cypher or in the list mm, um cowboy i fuck with cowboy his music so dope he he a real spitter like i fuck with his music i say cowboy for sure for sure that would be something we would love to see a cowboy and mulatto hell yeah he Ooh. he crazy hard now you have now along with queen of the south you have another uh, moniker called uh, obviously big lotto but there i want to know is there ever a, a moniker that you created that didn't stick hmm that's a good question. Oh, look. <laughs> In the beginning, this is about to be so funny. Mind you, I started rapping when I was 10 years old, so cut me some slack, okay? <laughs> I used to be like, um, I, I used to be Miss Mulatto, then I cut just Mulatto. So I used to be like Miss Mulatto, AKA Goldilocks, cause my real hair is like blonde and curly and hella long. Like, that shit corny as <laughs> You might I used to say use that. You, can still use it. you can still use it. It's all right. Hell no. Nah. I didn't have the time. I don't even be having my, my real hair out. So they're going to be like, Goldilocks, bitch, you got a, a blue wig on. What you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Now, um, you said you had the deluxe edition coming out. But um, I want to mm -hmm. know uh, who didn't make the project that you were really trying to get? Like, who was a collaboration Ooh. that you had in the works that are you that the song just wasn't finished? Yeah. Um, who would have mm -hmm. Oh, that's a good question. Cause I had one of um one of the songs that was supposed to be on original, it just didn't work out right to be on original, but it's gonna be on the deluxe and it's a big, big feature. So I can't say, but that is something that is something that I went through with this project. One of the features, a big feature I had to save for the deluxe, and I was so pissed about that. Like I had a whole attitude with my label about that too. <laughs> but it'd be like that sometimes. You just gotta trust the process, everything happened for a reason, whatever. Now you've been proud, you've been very prideful with um displaying that you have hundred percent creative control from your label. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. something that I know a lot of artists would probably have issues trying to get. But how do you make describe the importance of that? Yeah, it's so important because it's just like you have to you know yourself you know your lane you know how big you want to be you know what you're willing to do and just nobody know you your goals your future like you do so it's just like you got to have two hands on the steering wheel and you can't let the the back seat drive the passenger drive it's like you in the driver's seat you got to drive 
when you start weighing other people's opinion too much and just letting too many people have say so, you you stray away from yourself. And I feel like people resonate with me because of the authenticity. So I'll be taking the easy way out if I let a label come in and tell me how to dress, how to make music, how to rap, like how to talk, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, I'm real keen on that. And then just rapping for so long, I've been in situations where, you know, people presented me an offer that they wanted me to change this, or they tell me, yeah, you can, you can be like this if you do this. So it's just like, from experience, I learned, like, when I sign my deal, I'm going to be so headstrong when I walk in that meeting to where they know don't even play with me, like, period. <laughs> my way or the highway, facts. No doubt, no doubt. Now, on the show, we did see that your father had, he was a very authoritative person. He made sure everything mm -hmm. was on point. And mm -hmm. being that family, it takes a village to raise a child. And you know, you've been doing this since 10 years old, man. Um, I would say, man, what do you see today from your father that still inspires you? Mm -hmm. Influence you? I say, say I say everything, everything I am and what I stand for is not just my dad, but both my parents. Like, they raised me to be the, the independent person that I am to this day. Like, I wouldn't even have started rapping if it wasn't for my parents. Like, literally, I remember at like 19 years old telling my daddy, like, hey, I want to rap. And he like, they don't play. So they like, oh, if that's what you want to do, we're going we gonna to do that for real. Like, you're going to be, I'm going to pick you up from school. We're going to go to the studio. You're going to do your homework and record. Like, they go full force with everything. So I feel like just the, the ambitious person that I am today is because of my parents, for sure. No doubt, no doubt. And then coming from a biracial family and everything going on right now, I want to know what is the conversations like in your household between, I yeah. mean, between yourself, your mom and dad and everything that's going mm -hmm. on right now. I just want to know, mm -hmm. like, I mean, because you have a whole different dynamic and then yeah, even, for you, sure. you have to, you know, display a whole different dynamic because you're coming from yeah. both sides. So right. how, what is the conversations like with you and your family? It's it's real different. That's a good question because I think people would be real interested to see the conversations. Like that would be like a cool behind the scenes piece. But um, it's like so my parents they from Ohio. They moved here when um I was two years old. My sister wasn't even born yet. So a lot of the stuff that like we experienced in school, like literally, I remember in like kindergarten or even younger, like people being like. What what is you? I seen your mama drop you off, and she, your mama white. Your mama white lady. Like literally, race in the south is a thing. Versus in the in the north, it's not really as like heavy looked on like that. So like a lot of the stuff. Um, growing up, me and my sister would like teach my parents or like open open my, our parents' eyes. Um, so boom. But then like as far as like the black and white. It's crazy because it's like I'll have to teach my white side of the family sometimes, like, and it get frustrating. You know what I'm saying? It's like they, because if you don't live that, it's it's kind of hard to to get someone to understand that. You know what I'm saying? Because we're talking about they already white, so they're not experiencing the things that I might experience, my dad will experience, or the other black side of my family and they live in predominantly white areas. So it's like, they don't have nobody to like show them. So it'd it, it be frustrating and I'm still young. So I'm learning like how to cope with it and not like on an educational level rather than just straight getting my feelings and being like, fuck y'all, you know what I'm saying? Because it'd it be times like that, like where, oh child, like I, I'm telling you, like I have to really educate rather than just trying to just be so aggressive. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it, it's I'm young, so I'm still trying to balance it, but it's it's very different. But it, as far as like my household, like my my parents and um, me and my sister, like we be all like on the same page for sure. Definitely, definitely, it's all love. It's it's all love. Yeah, it's all love. And like you said, man, um, you said that would make great behind the scenes uh, pieces. It would. Uh, you said that you wanted to start um, doing more like blogging or behind the scenes mm -hmm. or even like days in the life um is that something that you learned during this whole pandemic and that is that something that you feel would be more beneficial for your fans as far as engagement goes yeah i think um like for people to see my my transition 
from the rap game to now, I feel like like that behind the scenes content, like blogging or like a docu series or just like going live, something as simple as going live on Instagram is like it just let people see and hear me talk and ex explain that transition. You know what I'm saying? So people can resonate with me because for for someone who's seen the rap game, didn't see nothing else until now, Queen of the South and RCA, da da da. da it would be, I could see how it would be confusing, but I feel like it would be real easy to clear up with like a docu-series or like something like that, or even just like no hook when I just spoke on it real quick and people just, they, they resonate with that. So yeah, I think it's, and, and not even just me, just especially me coming from the background that I come from, but any artist period, like quarantine gave us, they opened our eyes like, okay, it ain't no shows, it ain't no, like it ain't no popularity contest right now. You really got to, figure out how to touch your fans and get creative. Facts. You gotta let the music speak for itself, definitely. Yeah. Now you've grown a lot, like you said, as an artist and even from that, even from the series. Uh I would say you earned and really you gained the complete or entire respect from the whole Atlanta scene as far as an sure. artist. But one thing I think everybody wants to know or a question that everybody would have on their mind is would you be opposed to working with Jermaine? Oh, that's so a good question. Not signing, not nothing, just you guys working. Because lo and behold, yeah. you're one of the new generations, like best, and he's a legend and icon in yeah. the general. Just saying, like, yeah. yeah. No, yeah, for sure. I, I never, any in any situation, I would never take anything from somebody. Like, yeah, we probably don't agree on some, some stuff that happened or whatever, but I would never take away from the fact that. He is an Atlanta legend for sure. He is an Atlanta legend, and he is the uh, pioneer for a lot of the sounds today um, in today's music. But I don't know. I feel like it would it would have to be a conversation, like a real heart to heart first, because we haven't spoke um, like throughout none of this. We we haven't even spoke to even hear each other out. It's just been like you know blogs creating headlines to make him feel some type of way, make me feel some type of way. So now that I'm grown, I feel like we would we could have like a, a sit down like a just like a just be open book and just tell each other what's up type shit but i don't i don't think it would be like a nah i, I never work with him especially now that i'm older it's like i don't really hold on to to shit you know what i'm saying it's like i was 16 in during the rap game i definitely look back at some of the interviews i had or like just things i like comments i would make and i'd be like now that I'm grown, I'd be like, that was a little disrespectful. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I don't hold no grudges. <laughs> I, I definitely say uh, it, it's, it's possible. You never know. For sure, for sure. Now, what people don't understand is what you by you not signing with him and you getting to the point that you are is a defining moment in just hip hop, period, just for females. Mm -hmm. Because you mm -hmm. had the opportunity and you believed in yourself so much that you just mm -hmm. bypassed the deal, went on, went on trucking on and, you know, got to the point where you got a major debut and arguably one of the best albums in hip hop for 2020. Just by, Thanks. it's not even for a female, just you in general, just you as an artist. But um, I know you get a lot of questions about men in your DMs or whatnot. Yeah. I want to know, man, do you ever have females hit your DMs with freestyles or music that, you know, they'd be like, look, I'm, a, I'm an inspiring artist. You're one of my favorite artists. I mm -hmm. made this freestyle. I made this song. I want you to hear mm -hmm. it. Let you know. Have, you, have you had any of those? Oh, yeah. And it be feeling so crazy because I'm like, dang, I be feeling like, I'm so new of an artist. Yeah, I've been rapping since 10, but it's like I'm just not getting my foot in the door. So I'm so new of an artist. So like to be an inspiration for somebody else to rap or like an influence on they sound, it's just like, oh wow, that's crazy. Like it's a little, it's a little overwhelming sometimes. I'll be like, baby, I'm only 21. I don't want to be nobody like role model or nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, <laughs> but, but it's dope. You. It's dope. They believe in you though. They believe yeah. in you. Yeah, sure. it's dope. I yeah. get that all the time. Oh, okay, okay. That's what's up. That's what's up. Now, could you see yourself? I mean, being that you get these all the time, could you see yourself as a label executive in the future? Like, is that a goal of yours? Hell yeah. I feel like because, like, with myself, I I believed in myself, and I seen the 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 vision. I seen the bigger picture. Like, I wasn't enticed by a contract 
with with a, a few like oh the oh this a little dollars oh a chain oh like I I'm able to see the the bigger picture so I feel like I kind of got like a eye like a gift to see people like when I hear somebody rap I don't even get people the 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 audience they they get surprised by like chains and like money and cars you know what i'm saying like the fans that's why labels do that so the people the fans they gravitate towards that that flashy stuff but in order to like be like a label exec or something like that or a and r or whatever ceo of some label you got to be able to like see the vision without that stuff and i feel like i can like i'll listen to somebody rap like people be like oh can i rap can i rap for you and i'll listen to them rap and i'll just like see the hunger in them like it's like, it's not even, I don't know, it's just like a gift. Like, you got to either see it or you don't. But I, I definitely see it. No doubt, no doubt. Now, is there any open challenge for the Queen of the South title? Is there an open challenge, I guess I would say, for or the Queen like, of the South? Like, it's, it's not, but not on some, like, fuck y'all, I'm, I am the Queen of the South. It's just like, it's, it's. So there's there's artists from Atlanta, female artists from Atlanta that be saying Queen of Atlanta, and I don't get offended or be like, no, nah, I'm finna challenge that shit. Hell yeah, no, nah. I feel like we are queens. Like, I know that sounds cliche, but dead ass, we are queens, and it's just like this is the title that I'm sticking with. That don't mean that Megan ain't a queen of the South. Uh, the City Girls ain't queens of the South. It's just like mulatto. I I put I attach that to my name. That's that's all. That's the only difference. That's true. Now, but at the same time hip-hop is a competitive sport or oh, sure. competitive business and so it does have to come down to one day where it has to be that you know who is the one who is the the mon or yeah. who is the queen of the south so i mean but yeah. it's it's great it's phenomenal watching you guys race or run this race i mean because the fans get really great content out of it really great great music. Yeah, yeah even collaborations like if we can see yeah. collaborations with y'all and still compete and y'all still compete mm -hmm. it's beautiful so that's it is but uh mm -hmm. i guess you could say um atlanta hip-hop is very has been very very dominant in hip-hop period for a long time but what, long what time. you haven't seen is the female emergence of mm -hmm. it which you're getting now mm -hmm. you. and so how do you feel about just being like one of the trailblazers for that it's like it's crazy and i think people didn't even realize it until i started when I got that plaque and I started saying, and I opened people's eyes to the fact that I am the first solo female rapper from Atlanta to go gold or be certified, period. I think people didn't even realize, like, damn, Atlanta been the forefront for trap and just hip hop, period, for a minute now. And it ain't been no female to take that shit to another level yet. I think people didn't even realize that until I started pressing the issue, you know what I'm saying? So. I think it's dope now because now everybody's aware and it give it's better. It work out in my favor because it's like, okay, shit, she the female from Atlanta. They can't take that away from me. And yeah, they can't take record, it away. Definitely in the record books, and now we we on the platinum now. We now on the go. We on the no platinum. Cap. Multi platinum. No cap. We trying to get the diamonds. You know, yeah, you yeah. Wear them on your neck. You got to have them on the wall, right? <laughs> no cap. I feel like shit. It's on the way. You can't tell me otherwise. For sure, for sure. And then uh, another thing, like you saying, being an inspiration, man, um, just females in general hitting you up. What would you say when they ask you, like, questions about how how maybe even just to perfect their craft or how to just mm -hmm. keep going or what they should do when they mm -hmm. make a project? What would you inspire them with your message? I'll say being patient, off the real, you just got to be patient, like, literally, I was rapping since like 19. I ain't get my first huge platform till 16 with the rap game. Turned down that deal and was independent for five years. Signed my major deal at 21. So it's just like, you gotta be patient. And while you being patient, you just gotta stay, stay, stay consistent. Like people, going back to what I was saying earlier, like, like, like people just get comfortable. You can never get comfortable and you just got to have tunnel vision and just go crazy. Like, literally have your foot on the gas. Like, I think that's why people can't, they not fucking with me. Like, my work ethic, they not fucking with me. I don't care. Like, they not fucking with me. Like, people like, damn, she just blew up out of nowhere. No, I knew my work ethic was crazy. So as soon as I got a label to back me, 
with the with the the team, the the budget, production. Like I just knew it, it was out of here because like when it comes to work ethic, you gotta have a crazy ass work ethic. But you gotta wait your turn in the meantime and you know have tunnel vision. For sure, for sure. Now another thing that a lot of females have issue or not issues with, but have discussions about as far as lyricism goes is mm -hmm. uh, being overly sexualized in lyrics. Mm -hmm. feel like they have to do it in order mm -hmm. to get attention when they really don't. If you, have, if you just have skillful metaphors or skillful bars or whatnot, but seeing somebody mm -hmm. like you that can be so intangible and be able to do everything, mm -hmm. what would you say to, the, to these females that feel like they don't either want to be that type of artist or mm -hmm. you know feel like they don't want to be um, idolized as that type of artist. Mm -hmm. It just go back to that that creative control thing I was talking about earlier. It's like you got to have a hundred percent creative control over what you do. Ain't nobody telling me, hey, you need to be more sexual because the people's sex sales that are no, there ain't nobody telling me that I do what I want to do and I portray myself how I want to portray myself. I rap about what I want to rap about. My videos look how I want them to look. I, I dress how I want to dress. So it's like yeah, you could say the, the people over sexualize, like the industry over sexualize female rappers or whatever, but if you got 100% creative control of your shit, nobody can over sexualize nothing. It's going to be your decision to do however you want to do. And me, baby, I'm fine. So sometimes I'm going to be sexual. <laughs> but I'm a real nigga at the end of the day. So I got songs like No Hook, too. Or, you know what I'm saying? So I just feel like you go back to that creative control. It's like nobody, the industry, the fans, nobody can force you to rap away or over-sexualize anything if you don't give them that power. No doubt, no doubt. Now, you've been doing this since you were 10 years old and you got notarized at 16. But I want to know if you could go back, or if you can go back from the person you are now and go back uh -huh. to the person, you know, when you were 16 and drop yourself uh -huh. a line. Any line from your from any of your catalog, what would it be? Uh -huh. Ooh, any line to like inspire myself or like I mean what? you just hand yourself a line. You'd be like, hey, here, here you go. Use this one. Yeah. Um, I say I'd probably say I would just um I would I would say Queen of the South. I would just say that I would I wish I would have stuck that a little earlier. Like I'm, I'm only 21, so it's perfectly fine. But if if I would have stuck that earlier, it'd have been really out of here. Cause it's like in the industry, you always gotta find your lane. Because it's so many artists, like especially now, it's so many artists, a new artists every day. So it's like you gotta find your lane that ain't nobody in and stick with it. And it ain't been no female rapper from Atlanta. So if I would have like pressed that issue earlier, that would have been my lane earlier. So. But it ain't no pressure because I'm only 21, so whatever. Sure, for sure. And then with female rap or female hip hop at an all time high right now, it's uh it's been a minute since we had a, a female posse cut. Actually, I don't think we've had one at all. But if you uh -huh. had your choice to put you and four other art four other females on the track for a posse mm -hmm. cut, who would it be? Or who would it be? Not <laughs> um Megan, my favorite female rapper right now. So I'm gonna say Megan off rip. You said four other than myself. Yeah. Megan, um, Dreezy, Dreezy underrated like a motherfucker. Her bars crazy. Um, Megan, Dreezy, Flo Millie, I love her aesthetic. When I'm talking about that lane shit, she got her lane. And I feel like that's why she going crazy right now because she found that lane. And she young as hell. I just found out she was uh 19. That's crazy. Um, so Megan, Dreezy, Flo Millie. And light skin Keisha, cause we gonna bring it back to the LM for sure. No doubt, no doubt, no doubt. That's what's up. And then another popular thing going on is producers and artists doing complete collaboration projects with just that producer and that artist. Who would be mm -hmm. a producer that you would work with for a solo for a complete project? Ooh, that's oh um, mm, that's hard. I say, ooh, I got choose one. Ooh, ooh, um, <laughs> I'll probably say Jetson, just cause he got that Southern bounce and that's like my lane. So I'll probably say Jetson. 
Yeah, I'll probably say Justin. And he versatile. Like, I got some um, rap shit with Justin. I got some um, melodic shit with Justin. So I feel like it would be a cohesive project, too. Like, it wouldn't sound like one producer. Like, it wouldn't be repetitive. No doubt, no doubt. And then last question. Um, being that you've been doing this for so long, but, I mean, this is pretty much your moment right now. And a lot of people yeah. look at you not arguably having the best album, but also being the best new artist. Do you take offense to that or do you take pride in that? Do you honor that? I mean, you've been doing this so long, it's like you're not a new artist. You've been doing this, but people, yeah. like obviously this year, look at you as a best new artist. Mm -hmm. I would say, no, nah, I don't get offended because even I be saying like I'm a new artist. It's like, even though you've been rapping for a long time, whenever you get your foot in the door in the industry, that's, that's, when, that's when it matters. So it's like, I am a new artist. And I don't, I don't mind it because I'm young. So it's like, it just give me, give me room to like, you know, at 21, even as a person, you not, don't got everything figured out. So it's like, it give me room to like, okay, y'all know I'm 21, I'm a new artist, I don't got it figured out yet. Like, you know, it just give me time to like, not so much pressure. Oh, she a new artist. No doubt, no doubt. All right, well, it was a pleasure having you. Pleasure you taking the time out to do this. For sure. Uh, you guys know, it, uh, this is 50, man. We, we got Mulatto here. If you haven't checked out our album, Queen of the South, make sure you go check it out. It's literally one of the best albums of 2020. Yeah. And, Thank you. oh, can we get a video for Blame Me? Is that a request? Can we make a request for that? Or? Ooh, I ain't gonna lie. I might need to do that just so more people can hear. You know, people, like, when you attach the visual with the song, it just always go more crazy. So... Yeah, I might need to do that so people can, more people can hear that. Mm -hmm. No doubt, no doubt. All right, well, like I said, man, it's Mulatto here, Big Lotto. If you guys don't know, you know, little, I mean, Goldilocks, if you guys do know from <laughs> back in the day. <laughs> yeah, make sure you go check out Queen of the South. Make sure you go check out her whole catalog. And then, like we mentioned, we've been talking about Blame Me a lot this, this whole interview. If you guys don't know, you guys need to go check it out. Go stream it right now. For sure. Hey, Mulatto, it's a pleasure having you here. We look forward Thank to seeing you. you grow to you grow and Period. you blow up and do even bigger things and get that diamond plaque. I mean, we it's know it's manifesting you can exist existence. So for but, sure. Hey, I appreciate everything. Busy. Hey, Mulatto here. We out of here. Peace.